It has everything Hollywood movies wish they had today. We have another quote here. Uh, okay. We've done this with you in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, we're wondering if you could read this quote here. And uh, I'm not sure if you know who it is, but. Uh, let's see if I can figure it out. Okay. I feel like I'm on a game show now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am a filmmaker. My job is to make films. When something excites you, a story or characterization, you immediately forget about everything else. You only think how to make a movie out of it. The economics come only later. You shouldn't let money dictate the kind of films you should make. Well, I, I really love that statement. I'm not exactly sure who wrote it, but I love that. I think, well, there's a couple of things. It's, it's, un, it's unfortunate that um, filmmaking is the most expensive art form. Even if you make a film on your iPhone, at some point you're gonna have to do a professional sound mix. You're gonna have to use color correction. You're gonna have to spend some money to market the film, right? So even movies at a low budget level, money is sort of the unspoken producer of every movie. That's why when you see the movies with the highest budgets, you know, many times they appeal to everyone and no one and don't exactly leave, leave you with any sort of lasting impression. But I think money is always the unspoken producer and in addition, money is, for many beginning filmmakers, an excuse to not make a movie. So I feel like you need to kind of set all those excuses aside, find out what your baseline level budget is to tell a story and if there's a way to do it, leap right in. But now you have to tell me who, who said this. I, I don't know. Speaking of leap, thinking of the dancing scene, that would be S.S. Rajmuli. Sorry. Oh, wow. S.S. Yeah. Rajmuli said that. Wow, that yep. is fantastic. He, um, I'm, I've become a quick fan of S.S. Rajmuli. He uh, directed a film called RRR, which is a Tollywood film. It's, it's really interesting in India, they really have competing film industries. They have Bollywood, which many people are familiar with Bollywood and associate most of Indian cinema with Bollywood, but there's also Tollywood. Uh, and and they're, I think that the rivalry between the two industries is actually made for better films. Uh, and I will say, I discovered RRR when it was number three three at the box office the weekend that the Batman opened. And I found that really strange. How is it that the weekend that this biggest superhero movie, you know, Robert Pattinson is the Batman, that this movie RRR suddenly is unleashed in the United States. And I went to see it on a whim based on a recommendation from a friend and noticing like, how did this film, and the film just blew my mind. Three hour, epic, very loosely based on two historical figures. And it has everything Hollywood movies wish they had today. Just compelling, instantly likable characters. It very much felt like an old style Hollywood movie, a mix of, you know, yes, there are dance numbers. There's also romance and humor, action. There's heroism acts of self-sacrifice. I don't know that Hollywood can make a film like RRR. And it's, it's really disappointing to me. Oddly enough, um, RRR is the, I believe the highest budget movie ever to come from India at $75 million. And it's, it's really quite an achievement when you see the film. I would have thought it would, be, would have been in the hundreds of millions of dollars to make this movie. But the fact that it's $75 million and so epic in scale, there's a scene in, at the, near the beginning of the film in the first act, a character named Ram, who is an officer at an outpost. It's being protested. And it's an action sequence where Ram is sort of set on a mission to, to grab a perpetrator who threw a rock. He, he goes to try to track down this perpetrator. It's an epic action scene. You can't believe, I mean, it's just something on a scale we've never seen. I was shocked to learn that they took almost 30 days to shoot that scene with 20,000 extras. Not digital effects, 20,000 extras. So 
the achievement of this film is so remarkable. And it, it, it makes me sad that like, hey, you know, Hollywood can't compete with this. And I, I do see when you go to your local cinema, wherever your local movie theater is, you're seeing more and more, you know, not necessarily your Hollywood movie, but anime. You're seeing um, Spanish language films, Indian films. I mean, um, at the AMC theaters that I go to in Southern California, there is at least a, a new Indian movie every month, sometimes two a month. I, I personally love that because I've always enjoyed, you know, uh, world cinema. Has I, I've always enjoyed it. But this film is something special. One interesting thing that I would point out about RRR is Americans' reaction to this movie. Everyone I know that has seen it has really loved it. But what I find interesting is we live at a time where politics is infused into nearly every art form. Comic books, writing, movies, television. It's, uh, I, I could use a break, frankly from being lectured to. No one likes to be lectured to. And this film does not do that. But there are thematically some interesting things that are opposing in it. And I'm really surprised that, that I've never seen anyone point this out about RRR. On the one hand, the villains of the film are the colonizers, you know, the British. The sun never sets on the British Empire is what they say. And there's a character, Governor Scott, in, in RRR that is, I mean, he is, a villain right out of a Star Wars movie with the British accent and whatnot. So the white colonial invaders of India are the bad people. Now that is a political messaging. It's also a real historical thing that happened, okay? So it's not like it's a message, but that's something that would appeal to one side of the political aisle. Would be, hey, the colonizers are the baddies in this movie. In addition, in the same movie, there is also a thread about guns and owning a gun and the correct use of a gun, responsible use of a weapon, will lead to freedom. The character Ram, who I mentioned earlier, um, you get a flashback in the second half of the film with young Ram and his father and he's teaching him about uh, the value of a bullet, the value of a bullet being you know, worth more than the life of an Indian uh, and, and, and how that kind of plays through. He tells him the value of a bullet, what it can do, responsible gun use. You see he's sort of training an army to, to basically you know, fight their way to freedom from the British colonizers. So on the one hand, you have a movie that's very anti-colonizer that is also very pro-Second Amendment. You could look at it that way. I don't think I've seen a movie, I can't even think of a film that contains, if you've seen the movie RRR as many times as I have, you'll notice it, two opposing sides of the political aisle in terms of messaging. One being anti-colonizer, another one being pro-gun. Um, I don't know that S.S. Rajamali intended it to be that way. I don't believe he's lecturing in any portion of the film at all. I think it's all organic to the story. I just find it fascinating that not one person has pointed this out. That's interesting. I hadn't even thought of it. I'm referring back to the scene that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's also, just to keep it lighter, there's friendship, there's romance, there's amazing dance sequences, and then there's these animals. Right, animals, all digitally, the animals are all digitally created. Right. But also Ram's mission, which his sort of, his, his family is decimated and, and murdered by the, the colonizers, right? By the British, um, the British so soldiers wipe out his family and his tribe nearly everyone in his tribe. And then he grows up and he's on a mission to get the guns because guns will lead to freedom. And if, I mean, India was not united as a country at the time. This, for historical frame of reference, the, sto the story of RRR takes place in the 1920s, 
uh, it's also based on two real historical figures and imagines if they had met, right? Um, they never actually did meet. Uh, but, but the film kind of is, is definitely, hist I would call it historical fantasy. But you, the, you know, India was not united as a country. It was um, groups of tribes and, and the British colonizers coming in kind of helped unite the people. And, and the, the, Ram's mission is, his whole mission is to get weapons and then deliver them to his tribe so they can fight for their freedom and at least fight on an even playing field with the British having guns and them having guns. So, um, I, you know, these are sensitive things to think about and, and talk about because we live at a time where, you know, even if you reveal even a, a hint at what your politics might be, it could be a death sentence for a career which is sad to me. It's sad that we can't have open and honest conversations about a whole number of issues. I would love to be able to do that. But it's funny that this wildly successful, um, very mainstream and entertaining, almost a tip of the hat to old Hollywood film, RRR, has woven into it some messages you could read read in that are that are uh, that are, are right in the middle of the divide of where people are right now in the United States. And are they on two different religious spectrums as well in the film? No, they don't. Not so much. I mean, the film does deal with that. But what I love about S. S. Rajamouli as a filmmaker, he was asked in an interview. Or the interviewer asked him, said, hey, have you thought about doing a Marvel movie? You should, you know, based on the action in RRR, you should be making a Marvel movie. And S.S. Raja Mali said, I have no interest in doing a Marvel movie. I don't want to do that. And he wants to keep his focus on telling stories from Indian history and Indian mysticism and, and fables. And I think that that is why I so admire uh, Raja Mali as a filmmaker because he wants to stick to his roots, you know? And uh, I, I think that that's incredibly admirable. Did you expect to love the movie going in? I didn't know, I didn't know what to expect about RRR when I went in to see it. I, I just thought, well, okay, it's three hours. Uh, I know I'm gonna have to take a break. <laughs> At some point, there's gonna be an intermission whether there is one or not. But I just fell in love with it because, because it reminded me of a type of movie that Hollywood used to make, which wasn't any genre. You could easily just say, well, RRR is an action movie. It's not just that. It's also a historical fantasy. It's also a love story. In fact, there are two love stories, maybe three, if you count, if you count the friendship between Beam and Ram. So... It really is, you know, in my top, probably top five, if not top three movies of the year. And it should give Hollywood pause to see how successful this film is internationally, how it's beloved by anyone that sees it. If there's a way to see RRR in a movie theater, I strongly recommend it. Um, I, you know, I've seen it in the theater four times. I'm actually going to see it for a fifth time in the theater, and when you see this movie, it's like a celebration. I haven't seen an audience react this way to a film in a theater since the very end of, you know, uh, Avengers Endgame. That sort of swell of, you don't wanna just clap, you wanna stand up and applaud, you wanna scream for joy. I mean, I can think of times in the past where I've, you know, screamed at a movie theater and, and applauded uh, for joy, but I haven't done that, I haven't done that with a Hollywood film probably since that scene in Endgame, the portals scene, which is the, the very end of the film. I thought that was like, that was the culmination of 10 years of Marvel movies and, and telling effectively what turned out to be one story leading to that epic battle. Nothing compares except for the film RRR. And, and seeing it in the theater is, for me, um, if it's playing, I'm gonna go. Uh, I, I'm just so taken with this film. And I think there's so much 
there's so much to learn from it. And I really hope that Hollywood learn, learns the lesson of, you know, please stop the lecturing. Tell audiences a story that they can be engaged with, uh, with characters that you fall in love with. And I, I, think, I think really that formula is fairly simple. I don't, I don't know where we got to this place where we felt it necessary to infuse all of our entertainment with, uh, with, with some sort of lecturing. It's just, it, you just don't need it. And it's Tollywood, you said. Tollywood, yes. Um, there, yeah. I, you know, I, I am still learning about all this. My understanding is there are two dominant languages in India. There's Telugu and Hindi. And sometimes you will see, um, you know, they'll come out in different languages. I'm obviously I'm seeing it with the subtitles. I can't speak either language. Um, the only words I know are natu natu, which is the dance number, the dance number in in the middle of R R R. Where Ram and Beam do the natu natu dance, right? Then it turns into a dance off. Some people, some friends of mine, have recommended R R R to. They they kind of cringe for a minute, like, oh, is it's one of those Bollywood movies with dance numbers. And I correct them because I was corrected. It's Tollywood. And, and the dance number is a big part of the story. It's a huge part of the story. So it's not just put in there just to be in there. Right. There's a purpose. Sure. There's a mm -hmm. purpose for Natu Natu to be in the middle of that. And God, I wish I had the skills <laughs> that those actors did in that scene. It's, it's, it's really, really remarkable. So God, just... If I, if I could say one thing, just go see RRR in the theater if you have the opportunity. You can thank me later. <laughs>